it is an area where the president feels uh, a lot, a great deal of the crime we're seeing as a result of gun violence. I ex you can expect he'll speak to that uh, and his commitment to continuing to address gun violence and gun safety uh, in the country. Uh that is White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki blaming the recent crime wave across the country on guns and gun violence. President Biden expected to make the same case when he delivers remarks addressing the recent spike in crime in a speech at the White House later today. Here to react, we welcome in James Craig, former Detroit police chief. Chief Craig, thank you for coming on today. This is an important conversation that we've been following on this network, and I know an issue that you take near and dear to your heart. I want to start by showing off some statistics uh, with you and our viewers here. Again, this is right here in New York City. Overall, crime up 20%, shootings up 73%. That's not the only issue, though. Robbery up 46%, grand larceny 35 felony assault 20 Chief Craig, is this just a gun problem? Well, in New York, it's not just a gun problem, uh, you know, but let's face it, when you talk about homicides and shootings, uh, and I know here in Detroit, the majority of them are committed by criminals with guns. I think what's flawed in this approach, if, if the president's gonna come out with this anti-crime strategy, do not focus on the gun, focus on the criminal. What's missing from the conversation, and it just appalls me every time I talk and, and no one seems to understand it, we have something in, in, in our major cities called bail reform. And so what that means is a lot of these violent predatory criminals are being injected into our, our neighborhoods and they're continuing to commit violence. And then when you talk about guns, guns in the hands of criminals, Look, when you talk about all this defund the police, dismantling police, mm -hmm. law-abiding citizens want what? They want to protect themselves. They want to protect their family. So, yes, they're going to have guns. It's not a... And, and when Jen Psaki says gun safety measures, what does that really mean? Uh, I'm totally confused by that. Yeah. So we need to focus on the courts and what they're not doing. We need to talk about the anti-police rhetoric and the fact that the veil strategy uh, in many of these cities is eliminating qualified immunity. They did it in New York, and the outcome was this. The attrition rate went up, resignations, retirements. And so if you want to see more police uh, or boots on the ground, as they're saying, then what are we going to do to support the, the vast number of men and women who serve? How do we support them? And, and I got to tell you, but that's the big problem. Right. You know, you, you, you touch on so many important topics here. Your analysis, uh, so strong. Again, discussing qualified immunity, bail reform as well in these major cities. Uh, but a major sticking point here, don't go after the guns, go after the criminals. And for more yeah. on this topic, I want to welcome into the conversation Justin Nazaroff, owner of Phoenix Ammunition, uh, based in Michigan as well. Justin, we've spoken before about Honestly, the rise in people who want to buy guns and become legal gun owners. Uh, Justin, is it the problem of the guns or is it the problem of the criminals when we see these crime rates skyrocket? Uh, no, it's not a problem with the guns. And we know this because violent crime has been on a decline since the early 90s. And gun ownership has been uh, increasing at a pretty linear rate ever since. In fact, I mean, we seem to be breaking the record for gun sales just about every year, dating back to 2012 going forward. So, uh, you know, as always, the leftists get the cause and effect wrong. They see people buying guns and they say, well, that must be the reason that violent crime is on the rise. But it's the exact opposite, especially in 2020. During the pandemic, we see, OK, you know, a lot of police departments are already understaffed. They're fighting with the pandemic as well as everybody else. Uh, and we have a bunch of people who are now sitting at home collecting stimulus checks with nothing better to do. They see people throwing bricks at police officers, lighting small businesses on fire. Uh, so what are they going to do? They're going to defend themselves and they're going to prepare to do that by purchasing firearms. So the, the funny thing is a lot of the people who bought a gun in 2020 are actually Democrats, people that have never owned guns before. So if Jen Psaki wants to stand up there and say that the rise in violent crime is the result of people buying guns during the pandemic, 
what she's admitting is that it's actually Democrat gun owners who are causing this crime. Now, I don't believe that. I, mm -hmm. I think it, that's uh, completely false. But if she wants to try to tie gun ownership to crime, then that's the inevitable conclusion that we have to reach. Well, regardless of political affiliation of people purchasing these these guns, they're doing so legally. Uh, Chief Craig, is there a difference between the people who we see purchase legal guns and the people who are committing crimes? Where are they getting these weapons? Well, let me just say this, and, and I, I agree with everything Justin uh, had to say. First of all, gun regulations, gun laws don't affect criminals. They will always get the gun, always. They don't follow the law. You know, here in Detroit, we have something very unique, and I've had a great opportunity to attend a number of uh, concealed pistol license classes of all women. Do you know there are more African-American women in Detroit who are gun owners, CPL, and you know why? They want to be safe. They want to protect their families. Uh, criminals are getting the guns illegally, and that's what we need to focus on, criminals with guns. And, and something uh, Justin... Uh, touched on, when you look at the criminals today, uh, they're emboldened, uh, they're incentivized to commit crimes. It's appalling. When you look at what's going on in New York, when now, I guess, to go in and loot, it's not a crime. You got other cities that are suggesting and, and directing that police officers not even make traffic stops. Do you know how many guns here in Detroit we get from traffic stops? I'm talking about criminals carrying guns in cars, and how many shootings or murders are we preventing because of that effort? So yeah. I'm just concerned that today's strategy is just not, it's going to fall short. Because here's the other elephant in the room that we need to address. This administration is going to patronize the progressive side of, of the administration, and the progressive side wants what? Defund, dismantle policing. No support for police. Even as recent as yesterday, someone made a comment, and I think, I think they were part of Obama's task force uh, on law enforcement, made a comment suggesting that the reason why there's violent crime today is because of the police. Yeah. We, That's not the case. We, play, we played that soundbite on our network. Our panelists had similar reactions, of course, saying uh, that that was completely uh, unrealistic and, and completely wrong, quite frankly, in her analysis. I want to talk to you, though, about another major city where we're seeing crime. Let's take you to Chicago. Mayor Lori Lightfoot now says cities alone cannot tackle this problem and that the federal government needs to step in. Let's listen to this. Cities individually cannot tackle this problem on its own. We just cannot. In Chicago, we've done absolutely everything possible. And we need help from the federal government because this is a national problem. Chief Craig, your thoughts on that? Should the federal government get involved? First of all, hypocrisy. Last year, under a former administration, the federal government wanted to come in and provide support, just like they did here in Detroit. She rejected it. Magically now... She wants support from the federal government. She has 12,000, maybe 13,000 police officers. Support your men and women who do the job. Mm. There's no support for those, uh, those fine police officers in Chicago. I've had conversations with them. The problem is, and I'm not going to say leadership, the problem is with her seat. And she needs to be held accountable to do her job in creating a safe city. This is not the police. It's squarely lays on her lap, period. Yeah. All right. That is former police chief of Detroit, James Craig, joining us live. Also, Justin Nazaroff with your analysis. Guys, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good to be with you. You're welcome. Thanks. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.